Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Riffin' with Griffin. And once again, I'm back at the All Things Comedy Studio. I told you I would be. Um, today's guest, uh, a new good friend of mine, actually, uh, the legend himself. Give it up for Mr. Pauly Shore. <laughs> I'm leaving now. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Would you? <laughs> nice to see you. You're gonna be a nightmare from the jump. <laughs> Is that what this is? <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. Can I see your face? <laughs> How did you come up with the name Riffin with Griffin? It just rhymed. You know, actually, I was That's at a hilarious. I was at a college gig. Yeah, I was at this college gig and I was doing like an Instagram live um, thing, and I was like, I'm about to do a podcast. Yeah, yeah. And what do you guys think? You know, of, of a name, and I was coming up with all these stupid names, mm. and then some girl was like, Riffin with Griffin, and I was like. We- that's it. You gotta give, did you give her credit? No, I didn't What's give her, her credit. What's her name? I don't remember what her name is. <laughs> What's her, but where was this? It was on Instagram. But where, oh, she just hit you randomly. Yeah, yeah, because I was doing. Okay. The, I was in the green room and I was doing an yeah. Instagram live uh, okay, like before cool. I did the show. And then she was like, hey, Griffin with Griffin. It's so, perfect. Yeah. So you don't know her name. I don't know her name. You got to give her a little cash. Yeah. A little you, psychic. What are you doing to me right now? <laughs> I don't know. A Bobby Lee dude. Chinese dumpling. <laughs> There he is. You are just... So tell me... Um, I'm going to be tame for you, because I know you think I'm not going to be tame. No, no, no. I don't... I could be crazy? You ha- you you can be crazy. Like okay. when, you, when you invited me to uh, Gordon Ramsay. Yes. Uh, we went yes. to the Gordon Ramsay yes. thing together. That was, a, that was something else. But you, know, I can, but you know what? It is what it is. Yeah. You're famous for this. For what? For being Polly Shore. Correct. So when you go places, they're yeah. expecting that. And if right. you don't so do that, it, they're going to be like... It. They're going to be mad if you're not crazy. Right. So <laughs> a while ago, what was that? Probably three years yeah, ago, right? At least, at least three, three years ago, I hit you up and I'm like, hey, come with me to Gordon Ramsay's show. Yeah. And I was like, first of all, out of the blue. Right. I don't know why you even called me. Why'd you even call me for that? Because I like you. You're funny. Okay. Well, there you yeah. go. But I, we, 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 we don't have that many conversations at the time. Well, you still make me laugh. Oh, well, that's good to know. So, and then um, and then you you say come. So I go with you. It's me, yeah. you, and Brian Moses. Right. Then we're sitting at that's this hilarious. table. I've never been to anything like that before because I don't know um, people at home. I don't know if you guys even know. Like, it's a big dinner party, or you know. And then uh, Gordon Ramsay's yelling at the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the camera's moving around, and yeah. then you decide yeah, to like yeah. pick up your plate and go over, Gordy, <laughs> Gordy, this isn't cooked right. And then it was a whole thing. Yeah, well, it wasn't. They, it wasn't cooked right. See, so, I wouldn't know. What, yeah, was, what so was it like? Lamb chops or something? Free, it was free food, but I mean. His whole thing is to be like really good on his food. Right. That's his thing. His thing is like making sure. Are you allowed to swear on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, his his <laughs> his whole thing is like this is fucking awesome food, and then when I taste it, it wasn't good. So that's why I was like, yo, this food's fucked up. I know. And then, so, but he and then he took it great. That's what yeah. I loved about him. He yeah, just he like, was into it. Yeah, yeah he yeah. was into it. He was like this, this, uh, this food isn't good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so thanks for having me. Thanks for thanks for being on. Yeah, this is new for you. Yeah, because before before we started rolling, you guys, you're talking to the producer about setting it up at your house. How, what episode is this? This is gonna be I don't know yet, but this is gonna be oh. in the early 30s. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. I have already have some in the bank, so uh-huh. you're, I have to figure out where I want to put yeah. yours. You so know, this something is special. Good. This is where your podcast takes a shit. What when Polly Shore comes on, you're like, "Fuck!" <laughs> no, this a, is the Hail Mary. This, <laughs> <laughs> This is like, oh fuck, we were desperate. We got Polly Shore, but uh, is Polly Shore available? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. Come no, on, what no, are you no, talking no, I'm about? Just kidding. Um, you know what? I want to tell you, like when uh, they had the tribute at the comedy store mm. uh, for your mom, um, you were exceptionally funny that night. Mm. It was like you were. It was like something came over you. Not that you're not normally funny, mm. but just that night, mm. you were like at your most comfortable I mm. had seen you in a long time. Mm. Like. What 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 were you what what was going on for you like? Well, I think me, unlike everyone else at the store, except for maybe Argus, I've been there longer than ever, anyone. Yeah. So Argus, I felt yeah. I felt that night that that was my family. You know what uh, I mean? I felt yeah. like everyone there was you know knew me since I was a baby, and like I could feel like I felt like I was at home. You know, you had Louis Anderson there, Byron Allen was there, um, Jim Carrey was there, everyone was there. Yeah. So I felt like. You know, those are the people that I have relationships with ever since I was a little kid. So I felt like, you know, I mean, all you guys are new. Yes, so you, new. You know, all you guys are new. Like the store every seven, six, seven, eight years has this big kind of, just in life, I think, yeah. music, you know, comedy, it switches. So like I've been there for decades. 
you know, since the beginning. I'm 51, and the store opened in 72, so I've been there, what, almost, I don't know, what I can't even fucking do the math, but it's been a while, yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, it's an emotional place for me, you know what I mean? And, like, when I go on stage there, normally it's just, you know, I, I fuck her. It's, we, it's a weird, for me, it's a weird place to perform. Why is that? Yeah. Well, um, it's my mom's club. It's got, I got all the history there. Mm. So it's all that personal shit, you know, ever since yeah, I was yeah. a kid. And then also, <laughs> um, you know, I'm Polly Shore, the famous comedian guy that is, you know, tours America and sell shows out. So it's like a juxtaposition. It's like I have this kind of white America audience that you know knows me from all my films mm -hmm. you know son-in-law and seeing all these films and my mtv everything that i've been doing for 20 something years and then then there's the mom's club it's always been that way for me even when you know i mean it's always that way it's just you know it's like a weird thing i'm like two people there you but know? like uh, yeah. of the different eras that you saw yeah. like uh if you had to rank them mm. what, what would it be well i think it uh I mean, obviously, number one is probably always going to be the Richard Pryor, mm -hmm. Jim Carrey, when when those guys mm -hmm. were right there. But like, I think even in the seventies, I mean, I was there for Red Fox and like you know, and like uh, who else? Lenny Schultz was there, and um, uh, Pat McCormick, and like you know, the, the Natural Gas, the, you know, Dave Tyree, you know, all these guys that are you know older now, really older now, you know, from the seventies. You know, I think that time was awesome you know just because it was like so new and then Cheech and Chong was there oh yeah you know what I mean and it was just it's just you know it was different but I mean it's great now too you know so it's like it's uh you prefer those eras though do you think that I that, prefer those times those times you know what I mean it's not just the comedy store I think it's just uh you know I think um those eras I'm just happy I was able to kind of experience the 70s 80s and 90s yeah did you ever want to like actually take over for your mom i always thought that that's what you were going to do that you were going to sit in the back of the or on a monday monday nights and pass people at the store is that something that you wanted to do or why didn't that happen um a lot of it is it's kind of a weird it's kind of a weird situation um i have to say like uh mm, you know you, you have other family members you know, you have brothers and, and, you know, and this weird history that I have with them. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm not Mitzi Shore, you know what I mean? And I don't want to be Mitzi Shore, you know. I do it, na I, I'm a, a natural, um, uh, you know, I, I naturally develop comics, you know, that tour with me. I mean, every comic on the wall here pretty much is open for me. Um, <laughs> You know, Hilarious. not everyone, but I mean, most comics, you know, I mean, Bobby opened me for a while. I mean, I just like to, I like to develop comedians. I love it. You know, well, I that's love, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying, yeah, though. Yeah, Wouldn't yeah. that have been the natural position for you to be in, in your own way? Not to say that you were going to do it like your mom, yeah. but like, dude, there was, was there ever a thought you'd be like, okay, now I want to move the, like, to have the poly era at the comedy store? Yeah, I think that is something that will at some point naturally happen, mm. you know? Um, but right now, it's kind of not happening. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but at some point, at some is it point, just, is it just too much to deal with? Like, uh, I know family is a motherfucker. Yeah. Okay. People always yeah. talk about like, you know, in the movies, they always depict family as like people do everything for family. But in real life, it yeah. seems like family is like what is like what is the bane of your existence sometimes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's difficult. You know what I mean? Because, you know. I mean, do you have brothers and sisters? No, I'm the only child, but I have so, like yeah. cousins and stuff that yeah, I don't so, talk to anymore. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of the situation. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, so it's like um, I met one of your brothers, your Doctor Evil brother, that always has a dog with him in La Jolla. Yeah. He always comes to my show in La Jolla. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, 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 he's Scott. Like, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got some hot babe with him. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he, Scott's a funny guy. Scott's uh, um, he he uses that dog as a prop for sure to get him pussy. <laughs> I mean, like, without that dog, you can't get pussy, period. <laughs> but he needs to upgrade the dog. It yeah, seems he like, said to me, what's hilarious like is that. dog is about to die. <laughs> but what he said to me the other day, which is hilarious, that dog's like 14 years old. His, yeah, name's, Her saying. his name's Hershey. He already said he's getting a new one. I'm he's like, Jesus, it's not even dead yet. You're getting a... Because that's his crutch. Uh, Basically, the, the way what Scott usually, I think I talked about this on stage at my mom's uh, memorial, but basically what he does is, because um, he's, you know, in his, he's uh, in his, I wouldn't say late 60s, but he, uh, he basically, will, like, we'll go to Chin Chin, 
You know what I mean? And there'll be like some chicks there and he'll have like a long leash. You know what I mean? He kind of lets the dog go. And the, you know, girls love little dogs. Oh, what they, a bastard. Oh, yeah, he's the worst. Then he's, then, as soon yeah. as they get it, I uh, bet like, he does oh, this. Yeah. As soon as they go, oh my God, he goes, come back here. Or yeah, you. Yeah, they yeah. go, oh my God. Is yeah, that your and then dog? he takes a picture with the girls and the dog. You know what I mean? And then he says, Nightmare. let me get your phone number. And then he texts the picture of the phone number. And then a week later, he's eating their pussy <laughs> as they're holding his dog. And they're sitting there holding a dog. He's like, I took a picture with this guy. How is fucking Gandhi eating my pussy right now? You know, so, you know, but everyone has their thing to get pussy. Yeah. Or get girls. What's your, or what's your, what's your thing? Uh, my crooked penis. <laughs> That's a TMI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but wait, you don't open with that. You're not yeah. at the club and you go, boom, crooked no. penis. No. No. Come I on, what's your thing? I don't know. Is it being um, Polly Shore? Yeah, still? probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's it, you know, but then... But you were so I famous think, at yeah, one time. Yeah, like, I, think, I think, like, after a while, like, that kind of goes out the window, and then you're, like, stuck with the person. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, it's yeah. kind of like, you know, there's people that are famous that you get to know that are, are not, you know... You know, what this, you know cool. what this reminds me of? It reminds yeah. me of, like, when you bring a famous comic up at the comedy store, mm. somebody, like, you know, like a special famous guest, and, the, and the, you go, Intr- introducing such and such, and the crowd goes, oh! But if they're not doing jokes after like two minutes, they're like, okay, it's I guess rap, this guy's yeah. not funny. Yeah, it's a wrap. So that's is that that's your <laughs> that's I how you think, are with the dating? I think that I think that's how it is in life. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, I think like you know, everyone, you know, likes people that are famous or they know them from their movies or whatever it is, and they have that connection, they're like, oh shit, like this guy's awesome. And then they realize like, oh, that guy's a, an asshole, or yeah, that guy's yeah. really nice and and for me, and per- particularly, like, like you, you're starting to know me, but I don't want to say this, but because uh, it sounds weird, but I'm a really nice person. Yeah, you are. You know, I'm a nice person, and I think people are really surprised. You know, I have an agent that books me sometimes um, on the road, and he's like, "God, I got to know you, and you're not at all what I thought." And I think that has has a lot to do with you know, even like Marilyn Manson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a really nice guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like that's the thing about personas and right. and, and you know and in in you know when you see people you think a certain way and, and I'm not saying that everyone isn't that way, yeah. but there's a lot of people that aren't how they really are. Right, like right, Gilbert right. Gottfried is a great example of someone that on stage he's like this and Can then, you even imagine and, if and like then, you're at and, lunch with him? And but he's in like, real life he's so Holy <laughs> sure. <laughs> In real life, he's so precious and yeah. sweet and very, you know, such a nice person. So that's how it is, you know? So, yeah. You know, a funny thing is, like, when I first started doing comedy, I took a class with your sister mm-hmm. at UCLA Extension. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It, was, it was crazy. Yeah. You know, and then how I... How was that? It was... I, I suggest anybody that's trying to do comedy or even thinking about it, mm-hmm. I suggest go to a comedy class one time, like whatever, if it's like five class, whatever it is, go to that string of classes so you can get comfortable with people that are like like-minded with you and mm. you're you're learning how to do things and then you do your little showcase show as mm. a great first show mm. and then you're off and running. Mm. So I, I do, and like, then, yeah. that was great for me because the first time I ever performed was at the Comedy Store OR yeah. for her graduation show. Wow. You know, but then yeah. I didn't realize at the time mm. um, how little respect the comics there <laughs> Had for the comics in a comedy class mm-hmm. you know, in that particular class at, yeah. at, towards the tail end. Yeah. So it was like it was a weird, yeah, weird vibe. Yeah, yeah. And it took me like <sighs> over ten years to actually become a regular at the comedy store after that. Yeah. Quitting and coming back and all that. Mm. But yeah, it's um. I think at the end of the day, it's about doing. You know, obviously, as opposed to whether you're in a class or you're just doing it in front of three people. And, you know, comedy is one of those things that, you know, it chooses you. You don't choose it. You know, like, I'm addicted to it. You know, like, it's in my blood. Yeah, but that's a product of your environment, yeah. too, though. You grew and up my dad, were my, born in a Yeah, booth. my dad, who's 92 years old, I just saw him in Vegas. And, you know, he's not doing stand-up anymore because he's 92. And it's hard for him. And, and I think if, for instance, I think if... If someone took a microphone away from us, we would die. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like for my dad, he's, I don't want to say he's dying, but he's not doing great. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that they took that, you know, they took a microphone away from him because it's, it's an addiction. You know, it's something that we have to do. Like I'm more comfortable on stage than I am, you know, pretty much anywhere. Mm. You know, I love just, I feel more relaxed, especially in front of my audience. So like, for instance, when I go on tour, I have a particular audience that comes to see me and I feel like warm. 
yeah. when I walk out there. There's a lot of love that my audiences have for me, and it's pretty, pretty fucking awesome. And sometimes it makes me cry right, because right. there's such a, you know, I've, whatever I've done in my career, you know, I've somehow touched them emotionally, mm-hmm. you know, from the MTV days all the way into the films, all the way into whatever it is that I've done, and it's still to this day, 30 years later, it's still just as strong. And now because of this, social media, podcasts, yeah. it's even bigger. You know what I mean? And Netflix, some of my stuff's on Netflix, and, and you know, and it's just, it's, I'm very fortunate. You know, I'm very fortunate, yeah. Yeah, I can tell that you uh, appreciate the life mm. that you have. But, I mean, you grew up such a, in, you know, in such a weird way. I mean, it was, th- it was very thr- weird. thrusted on you from yeah. the very beginning. I yeah. mean, daycare was like, yeah, go over there and play with, uh, while such and such is on yeah. stage. I mean, well, my dad, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people always talk about my mom. They don't talk about my dad. He yeah. came to speak at one of the classes at your. Uh, oh, great! Yeah, that Sandy yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, because you know, that's how it all started, art. you know, with with him and, yeah. and you know, and in, uh, you know, he opened for Elvis. Elvis Presley opened for Sinatra, you know, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and, and you know, and, and and all these guys. So it was. Uh, God, don't tell Tom Dreesen that someone else opened for Sinatra because he. Yeah. <laughs> so, but my dad, you know, my dad is, uh, you know, pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, he was a yeah f- a fun character. Mm-hmm. I always remember that. And he was on Sanford and Son. Oh wow. Yeah, he was. You know, he did a lot of a lot of stuff. You know. How come you never wanted to do? Like you never wanted to do like a sitcom, or, or you do want to do a sitcom, or can you see yourself being a TV dad now? Yeah, that would be cool. I think so. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> we um, should write that right now. <laughs> I'm the neighbor. <laughs> hopefully, after our, our movie comes out, you know, I, I I feel like there's something there. Yeah. With the movie we did. Speaking of, yeah, let's talk the, about. Yeah. yeah. No, with the movie. Mr. Segway I did, right here. No. <laughs> But with the movie house that we guest. did, guest house, guest, guest house. house. I thought it was house. Oh, was it guest house? <laughs> yeah, guest house. I think it was. Ho- You're a house guest in a guest house. Yes, and um, I think maybe when that comes out, I think people will, will see me again. You yeah, know, I think this like is like that. a resurgence. Of kinda, this is yeah, like kind of because it's a starring role. It's, it's not actually, about, it's old school Polly too. It's it very old much is. School Polly, yeah. <laughs> it's an homage to old school Polly. Yeah. But uh, older old school Polly. Yeah. Tell us, tell them about the movie. It's a, it's like a little bit, you know, my character. It's called Guest House, and basically, I play a squatter in a guest house that won't leave, mm-hmm. which is a premise that's kind of old, but you'd think someone would have done it, and it's never been done before. Yeah. I don't, which was so weird. So it's kind of like Neighbors, or you know, one of those films where I'm like in the back, and there's the millennial millennial couple. They, uh, um, you know, they, they're buying this house and this fucking nut, nutball is in the back of the house <laughs> doing coke and, and getting all fucked up. At first, when I got the script from Sam, I was like, this character's doing coke. I'm like, I'm not going to fucking do coke. Yeah. And then the slowly more I got dragged into it, I'm like, you know what? This He's is hilarious. Coke. <laughs> this is hilarious. Like, who does coke on camera? No one. Yeah. The last time they did that was in Scarface. Like, uh, this guy's doing lines and fucking trying to, like, negotiate his rent <laughs> with the guy in the front. <laughs> so uh, he's kind of like Spicoli meets, you know, meets Scarface meets like What About Bob? Yeah. You know, and, um, and he likes fat girls <laughs> and he likes chubby girls. Yeah, that's his thing. So, yeah, it's a, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. So, yeah, because yeah. there aren't that many uh, like raunchy comedies out anymore. There are no. not any just fun comedies where people just go yeah. and laugh and be like, oh, my God, that was so funny. It was rated R. They're not even doing that anymore. Yes, and that's why I think it'll do well is because it's totally anti with a way. It's the anti-PC film. It's kind of like American Pie or, or, you know, or Hangover where it's like tits and ass and pussy and drugs and party and, and over the Inappropriate top. Inappropriate language and all that. Yeah, and, and, and working with you was, was awesome on it because, like, we got to just fuck around. Yeah, that was fun times. And it was I didn't like, even think, and I, you know, I got to say, you, you did surprise me, like, not knowing you yeah. in, enough, like, you know, just mm-hmm. knowing, just, like, passing you in the hallways, mm. but just actually being there with you. I, I, it was very, very pleasant experience, thank sir. You, you thank know, you. you are mis- thank you. You are a misunderstood person. Yeah. Now, but what do you think about, like, how times are right now with, mm. with the PC culture, with Me Too? Like, do you think that that it lends itself to why there aren't that many more raunchy comedies right now. You think you think studios are scared to make? Well, pe- that's you know? yeah. I I just think that's the way that's that's the way it is. And I think um I think it's okay to get to I don't I think it's okay to um 
to, uh, to, to go up to the line but not cross the line. And if you do cross the line, you better have a fucking silly sense of humor about it. And I think that's with my comedy as well. As a lot of my comedies, I cross the line, but you know I'm not a racist guy and I'm not really fucked up. I'm just kind of having fun. And it's kind of like that whole thing is like it's like in your system you can tell if someone's not cool. You know what I mean? You would so, like to think. I mean, yeah. we'd like to think that people have this kind of That's sensibility true. that you're saying, but it seems to me that how often are we going, I can't believe these people don't know that that's a joke. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, but... but um, Because even with your own comedy, like, I yeah. don't... Are, are, you, are you trying to push the envelope? Are you saying things that... Or are you just still right in the pocket of, like, you know, being this friendly I, guy? Yeah, I try, to, I try to go to the edge, edge, and then I feel it on stage as a performer when to kind of pull it back, mm. you know, and that's kind of like a natural, a natural kind of instinct. I, I just think, you know? like, right now, it's weird, like, you know, they have to, like, take the cell phones from people now mm. because they're recording the mm -hmm. shows, and it's like, you, do you ever feel, a, not, I don't want to say afraid, but is, is there ever, like, a, like, a worry when you're, yeah, yeah, yeah you know? absolutely. Could but I had this I had this one joke where like, you know, the N-word is such a bad thing to say on stage. And I always said, like, you know, if I said it, like Al Sharpton will get the video, you know, and then I'll be like, I'll leave that guy alone. He's fucked up enough. He's got enough problems. We don't need to come after this guy. Um, oh, I, you know, actually, one of my favorite things you've been you were doing is like about like now you're you're gonna take over for uh, you know, Kevin Spacey. You oh know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. All that stuff is hilarious. Yeah, just there, the since whole... everybody's getting caught with the Me Too, and they're gonna have to hire you to take over the roles. Oh yeah, oh that was the uh, yeah that was a joke I did a while ago about um, pretty soon there's gonna be no actors left except for <laughs> <laughs> except for me. I want to thank Kevin Spacey <laughs> for touching those kids in London. <laughs> Because of you, I could, you know, get on the... I mean, it would be really funny yeah. if I was starring in House of Cards. I mean, then he would kill himself. For sure he would kill himself. Do you know he came to the comedy store about a, a few months back? Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that until somebody told me later. It was like, you know, Kevin Spacey was That's in the back. That's cool. Well, with he's a hoodie on and glasses and stuff. Hilarious. Can you even imagine if some, if one comic would have found out? Wow. You know what I mean? Especially they at the comedy store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, that's probably why he went there, because he thought he could be safe there. Yeah, or may or maybe he wanted to be, mm. like, seen, and then, then, yeah. then it gets out there. Kevin Spacey at the, com yeah. at the comedy store. I think a lot of that stuff has to do with how you are as a person, though, too. I mean, like a Harvey Weinstein and Kevin, and I don't, I never, I don't know these guys. I never really, maybe I met Kevin once, but I don't really know how they were as people. Right. So I think that has a lot to do with it, you know? What do you mean? Well, not being cool. Oh, 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 oh. Not being cool, dude. <laughs> not being cool, dude. So, but yeah, it's a weird, um, it's a weird time. You know, I say that the thing about the, uh, the, inter the, the internet is anyone can put their shit out there. Yeah. That's the good part. And then the bad part is anyone can Anybody put, can put their, their shit, shit out, out there. there. So yeah. it's like, it's different than it was when, when I was, you know, when I was, you know, starting out, it was basically you send your VHS tape in and you fly to New York or LA and that was it. Yeah. You know, and MTV was the biggest thing in the world. That's what it was. That's where all the kids were. And now I don't think kids really watch MTV. And they certainly don't play music on there. No. You know, mm -hmm. that's why it's like MTV, the learning channel, you don't learn shit on there anymore. Even mm -hmm. the weather channel has reality shows. I don't think yeah. Comedy Central does comedy anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know what... This is what it is. What we're doing right now... Direct to consumer. It, what, this is what it is. This is the business. The Rogans, you know, the Aries, the Bobbies, you know, uh, Tripolis, you know, all these people on your wall... Bill Burr, you know, this is this is the avenue. It's like you said the other day. Everyone's got a Twitter. Everyone's got an Instagram. Everyone's got a podcast. Yeah, something. And you and have a little little thing going on right yes. now too, right? What yeah, you got yeah. Going I on? love it. I love it. I'm really excited. I, I, I'm 51 years old, so I've been doing this for a, a really long time. So I'm kind of inspired by things that you know, or I, I get into things that I either really like, or I'm if I'm not really into it, I'm not into it. So what I did was I, I've had a podcast for about a year. It's called Polly Show's Random Rant. And it's basically me ranting on just observational stuff, kind of train of thought. It's kind of where my comedy came from back in the MTV day, which is just yeah. But the crazy part about it is not even this part. It's the fact that you yeah, I put cameras. You just have it. random cameras in your house. Yeah. So it's basically like a porno house without the porno part. I haven't right? decided I might do pornos. <laughs> I was telling no, I was telling. I was telling my producer Tyler, I'm like, dude, if I start banging chicks on here, are you can still produce. He's like, I don't know, dude. I have a wife. <laughs> I mean, I thought it because I, I thought it would be really 
interesting if I really went on a date. Yeah, for and you real. brought her home. And I brought her home. But because, she would have to know there's cameras, though, right? Of course. Oh. Yeah, yeah, of course. So there's like, I have like 10, it's kind of like, instead of Big Brother, it's Big Weasel. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's about a guy that lives alone. Yeah. And that's okay. Because if you ever, if you ever, if you ever watch TV shows, it's always about a family. You know, there's never about a guy. If you ever think of someone that lives alone, you think I sadness. I know. You think, oh, he lives alone. Yeah. He doesn't, you know, he's by himself. So it's about a guy. And I'm okay living alone. Am I going to live alone forever? Probably not. But who knows? But Even who if you knows? did. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I really enjoy about it. I think it, there's a message to it, too, because I get a lot of response from people going, fuck, I live alone, too. I cook like that. Because if you live alone, you live alone. Yeah. When you make yourself food, you don't go, or at least I don't go to the fucking dinner table and eat it. Yeah. That's fucking sad. Yeah. Who the fuck does that? Yeah, you just you eat it right You bust out your there. TV tray. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you know what I did? I have a table. I have a table in front of my couch. Hilarious. No, no, but no, it's a it's an end table, right? Like right. a regular, like, but it it lifts up, you know. Oh wow! <laughs> and you just put it right. I there. put it right there. Yeah, that's great. And then when great. I'm done, it, it becomes a, a table again. Oh, and that's like, you know, great. But that, that's like exactly. But you know, it's because like, do you, now do you have married friends who are always like on you about like, come on, man, it's time to settle down. It's time to like, you know. Um, Bobby Lee hits me up a lot, a lot. I mean, how a, a, dare a, he? Yeah, yeah. Who is he to no, be giving out well, relationship he knows, advice? <laughs> I've known him for. I'm the one who discovered that guy. So like, I've known him for for years. So he knows like there's a sadness in me that I don't have kids. You know, and you at the end of the day, kids? I guess, yeah, about? yeah. But he's just telling me like. You gotta have a kid. You gotta have a kid, and I agree with him. I want. I was thinking about going on eHarmony for real because I have a friend of mine that I just. Well, I wouldn't say a friend of mine. I'd say someone that I just met that met his wife on eHarmony, and I'm like, why eHarmony and not a Bumble or a Tinder like that? Because when people go on Bumble or Tinder, they're just kind of fucking around. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you go to eHarmony, it's kind of like I'm going to settle down. Yeah, well, there's you an expectation too that you have to, your whole dossier is yeah. on there. Yeah, like the thing is, is like if you go on eHarmony, you're, that's like some. That's some like you're taking it more serious. Okay. You know, so I'm thinking, Are you thinking about, about it. Yeah, I'm thinking about going on <laughs> eHarmony for sh- for real. Because I, I want to have a kid. I do want to have a kid. You know, but it's got to be with the right situation. Well, I think you could just. I think that on your show right now, you could just be like, you could actually do The Bachelor. <laughs> That's true. I was. You, know, think- you put this out there in the universe. Like I'm looking to, yeah. to looking to settle down. Yeah, I was also Next thinking. You know, you're of, yeah, I was also thinking of possibly talking to one of my Instagram girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Like I have girlfriends on Instagram, not girls that I'm sleeping with, but just girls that are friends that are girls that are like my my pals or whatever. I was thinking about possibly getting their their egg, my sperm, and putting in one of my chubby fans from the Midwest <laughs> and having her live at my place. Wait, so you're gonna have a fat girl have a hot girl? Well, have no, a hot a baby sur- like a surrogate. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like a surrogate because she doesn't want to get her fucking body fucked up. So that that you know what I mean? <laughs> wait, wait, well, an Instagram is be model- a new service. So chubby girls out there are gonna be like, "Hey, get your hot girls' eggs, <laughs> get the hot girl eggs, and put it in, put it in a chubby girl to have little hot babies." It's just a thought that I, I. It's just a thought that I had. There's a movie there. I think there is. <laughs> or a TV show called Polly Shore's Random Rants uh, at the Fourplex. Which you can see at. Yeah. But I, I really enjoy it. And I, I shoot two a week, and I've been doing, there's probably like 15 of them I started. And um, it's cool. I have Filipino neighbors. I bring them on once in a while. And, and eventually I'll start bringing people on. So it's cool. Just, it's just like having a, people over. It's a way to um, kind of express my, it's like, it's pretty much like me doing a set yeah, yeah, without yeah. jokes. You know, all well, over my place. Well, that's just like one of your sets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but with no material. It's kind of like just ra- ranting on anything, you know? So why do you... Okay, let's go back to this. Why Why do you think you you feel sad? Um, well, there's been a lot of death in my life. That's, especially you know, recently. A lot, you know, a lot of stuff. R.I.P. to all know? the people. Yeah, a lot of death. So, you know, and then my dad is, is pretty sick right now, mm. you know, and... Um, so I think that has a lot to do with it, not just with family members, but um, – and then I've been going through a lot of stuff with my, my brothers, oh. which has been, you know, hard. Yeah, I can imagine. And my sister died and my mom died. My best friend Gary died. My dad's sick. My other friend shot himself. So Jeez, there's like a man. lot of shit that has been going on. So I just look at life a lot different now than I, than I did younger. You know, it's like – when you're your parents alive? Yeah, my mom's my it's just my mom, but speaking of my mom right now is mm. like 
I think dementia or something is kicking in right now, and it's like it's really it's really hard. Yeah, you know. And I sit and I think about like so when we're at our age and we're thinking about like, man, should I have kids? Because you're thinking about like how we're here for our parents right now. Yes. And it's like, well, who's gonna be here for us? Mm-hmm. So but it's also I think. If you talk to people that have ha- that are older that have kids, you know, Bill Burr, fucking Jamie Masada, even, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. He says like, he's my like point- eighty-seven. Yeah, he but my point <laughs> is, it's like my point is, is there's a reason that they say that they're so fucking happy when they have a kid. That, you know, even Sandy Danto yeah, has yeah. a fucking kid. <laughs> you know Why you mean? say it like that? <laughs> well, because he's young and he's you know. You said it like even Gollum has a you know. <laughs> Well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you mean. But but so I want to be able to leave this earth one day, like, and be able to say, like, I had a fucking, I had kid or a kid to experience that, you know, whether it's you know someone real that I'm settling down with, or whether it's a surrogate, whether it's mm-hmm. some sort of a you know situation. So well, I think yeah, yeah, I think that. You know, as we get older, we just become more vulnerable. Mm. I think that's what's happening with you right now, too, is like you just, yeah. this is just like a vulnerability of just being like, hey, whatever. You know, this mm. is me now. Like, I'm yeah. not trying to hide anything. Or yeah. pres- this is this is who we are. Well, it's my, my, you know, when you get older, your interests kind of naturally change. Yeah. It just slowly, you know what I mean? Like, it's more important to get a good night's sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Than it is to like go out and get fucked up. You yeah. know what I mean? Or go to, for me, I like to go to the gym. I like to go to the spa. I like to eat good food. You know, I like to watch TV. I like to like it's the simple things. And you know, I talk, I talk a lot about, um, you know, um, just you know, looking at what you have, not what you don't have. And I right. think that's important. And that's kind of a message. You know, you, you, you look at life. It's so fucking nuts. You watch TV. These kids that get killed in school. Like, they're sitting there fucking at school, and all of a sudden some crazy other kid comes in. There goes the person's life. So my point is, is every, and it sounds fucking stupid and whatever, but my point is, is the older you get, the more you realize, you know, you, you really appreciate just the fact that you woke up and you can go do shit. You know what I mean? Like, so are you appreciating like life now? Like now that you're doing the movie, you mm-hmm. might start doing more things like that. Mm-hmm. The stand up that you're doing, the traveling you're doing. Are you more content with that now than say you were even at the like the height of it? Yeah, yeah. Just because you know it's a wrap in 30, 40 years. You know that's it. You know you make it to eighty, you've won. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah, fifty one, yeah. so it's like I got thirty more years if I'm lucky. Yeah. You know, or you know, my dad is sitting there, he's fucking ninety two, and he's sitting there going, I'm, "I was funny. I visited him a, a month ago, ago or two months ago in Vegas. I'm like, Dad, you want to go outside? He's like, For what? I've seen everything. Just leave me the fuck alone. You know what I mean? Let me sit here. <laughs> don't fucking touch me. You know. So uh, I don't know. It just comes with time. It's just weird. Your interests start changing. What do you, you know? What do you want to What do you want to do with this next thirty years? Like what do you Like what do you want to accomplish in this stage in your life? Um, well, my relationship with my brothers. You know, I'd like that to you wanna, get. You want to heal that? Yeah, I'd like that to you know somehow you know but somehow why, move forward. You know. Well, why can't you? Why can't it start to heal? Because it is. I feel start- like you genuinely want this to be a good thing. And well, there's a lot of stuff that has gone on between me and right, them right. in the back. I don't want to start talking about no, no, it. No, okay. Yeah, it's legal shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it is what uh, it is. Uh, but tell me this: are, do you, do you have your own resentments? Are, are you holding on to some shit that you might need to let go to make this happen? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not perfect. You know, I've done some stuff, and you know, they've done some stuff. But I think it's about. You know, that's the thing is like I think about my mom a lot, you know, about how she is, you know, and, and what, what she would she would be like, you know, like like if I was like moping around thinking about my mom, my mom, she would be like, What the fuck? You know, move on, get over it. It's yeah. fucking done, it's tired. <laughs> you know, my mom is always about moving into the future. Mm. And I think that's what I'm enjoying my podcast because my podcast, I don't go into the comedy store shit. I don't go into any of my fucking personal right, life. Right, right. A little bit, but it's always like the future, the future, the future. It's just you living your life, actually. Yeah, living my life yeah. right now, but also commenting on just random shit. You know what I mean? It could be anything about the 99 cent store. You know, I'll just right. comment, you know, I was at the 99 cent store and some what guy was like, What are you doing at the 99 cent store? <laughs> well, it's funny. You cheap you just, bastard. I know. <laughs> but there's one right at the, the bottom of my hill. Oh, okay. You know? <laughs> So I've gone in there, but I just wrote a joke about it. But my point is, is that, you know, I, I think for all of us, it's important not to sit into the past, is to try to move into the future. It's okay to kind of nod to the past, 
But if we keep sitting in the past and talking about all the bullshit in our lives that have happened in the past, you just get depressed. Yeah. You know? And that's for everyone. And, you know, no, no, I agree. Yeah, and it's like, fuck, you want to just move forward. Yeah, I'd love you to. Know? Yeah, that would be great. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see you. Uh, I'd love to see that happen. Yeah. And you should have them come to the, your house and be on the be on the podcast. Yeah, I'll tell hilarious. them they're watching right now. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we have a good thing going at the comedy store. You know, my mom has really created a beautiful, a beautiful place, and I think there's a mutual respect. Yeah, with all the comics, I think everyone kind of, you know, I always say the com the comedy store is the star. Not the stars that go play the comedy store, right? You know, right. there's a there's a mutual respect and a history of that I think she created, <laughs> that's embedded in all of us when we go there, myself included. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't run the light. You know, I don't fucking I don't play that bullshit. You know, like oh, I'm the owner and this is my place and da da da. That's never been my style. You know, it's always about this. What's best for the store? Yeah. Yeah, right now too, especially like there's a lot of great stuff going on right now. Like just like whatever this renaissance that's mm. happening right now, this yeah. like vibe that's in the place, and yeah. even in the city too, though, because mm. I can tell because if you go to some of the other clubs, they got some of the same lineups. The well, same it's the feeling, but it's my mom. It's the feeling that my mom created, and it's the respect in the rooms that she created. And we're just <clears throat> my brothers and I, and the comics and the staff are just trying to you know keep that moving forward. And I think that's, you know, and that's kind of an homage to her, you know, and yeah, for sure. Yeah. And like, you know, you know, there's, it's, there's a brotherly thing there, you know, back like, unlike when I was younger, it was fucking guns and drugs and all that <laughs> shit. People are fucking waitresses on the belly room stairs. Oh, and, the good old days. Huh? Yeah. Oh, it's fucking <laughs> Argus Hamilton was wild, dude. That guy needs a documentary. <laughs> For real. He Have you been to... on his show? He's got this weird know, show at the comedy store. I'm scared to go on. Oh, man. I went on it. I was like, this is... <laughs> like, like howdy doody, right? Yo, Argus is a... He's a weirdo, man. I love him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a beautiful guy. He's yeah. He's been through a lot. Yeah. He's been through a lot. I think... A, you know what's so weird about being at the comedy store is like seeing all these people that we see all the time. Like, it goes for years now. Mm. You know, it's like years. It'll be there longer than us. You know? It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'll still be there. But, I think so. but it's like I, I love that sort of like it's like a weird extended family. Mm. But like occasionally you get a chance to like go even a little further because mm. as much as we know each other, a lot of people really don't know each other. Yeah, it's it's kind of like when you do movies. You know, people always ask me about like, oh, what's Brendan Fraser doing? I'm like, dude, I haven't seen him since we wrapped in Ceno <laughs> Man. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Oh, what's Stephen Baldwin? Uh, I see him sometimes. Yeah. People think that people think that you know comedians all hang out. Right. You know, and we don't. Right? I no, mean, we don't. Some that's what I'm saying. Do. Like, you know what I mean? No, no that's what I mean. That's Except like... for Brian Callen and Chris D'Elia. They always hang out. Yeah, they seem to be like, yeah, like, like... like genuine friends. Oh, my God. But that's what's great. Like, yeah. I feel like I've made some of my, my best friends of my life. Like, Bobby Lee is one of my just mm. one of my dearest friends. You know what I mean? Even though he's a little shithead, you know? But uh... Why is he a shithead? Oh, he, he doesn't return texts. No, he doesn't. Have you ever tried to text him? It's, yeah. it's a nightmare, you know? And I, and I tell him, I answered his call one time. He called me. I was on stage. Yeah, and you answered. And I answered it because yeah, I was yeah. like, "Oh, guys, this is Bobby Lee, and I got it. he never calls, so I got to get this." Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it actually, it was about your movie. He was like, "Are you doing a Bobby movie?" But I was like, "Oh, cool." <laughs> and I was like, "I had that." He was checking in on. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure it was cool, right? Yeah, yeah. Is this, are you doing is this it? Real? Is this is a it, porno? Yeah. Is this <laughs> a legitimate film? And then I was like, "Bobby, I, I'm on stage, and you're on the thing." He was like, "What the fuck are you doing? That's I don't want to say anything bad, you know." But yeah, so he just doesn't answer. And he's just a weird. He's got. A lot of these guys have like weird interpersonal issues. I think all comics do. Uh, yeah, to I some think, degree, yeah, right? All comics are very kind of um, introverted. Very much so. I think we're very awkward and we're very, um, you know, not not so we're socially awkward. And and then yeah. like the persona we create on stage is what we want. Like that's what we're hiding behind. But like when it gets down to it, like this. Yeah. It's like this is more like how we would be anyway. Yeah. Like, you know, I think people think comics are sitting around just like, we're cracking jokes. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, yeah. we're like talking like deep, like too deep. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Unless you're Brian I, Callen. Brian yeah. Callen's the only one but, that like. But also like back in my dad, my dad's days, my dad used to belong to the Friars Club, which was like a big Jewish kind of like, you know, uh, you know, it was like a, you know, it was a club for, for older comics. They used to do shtick though. That was. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they would sit at, you know, it's kind of like if we all went to Canners, 
you know, and just fucking fucked around. But we don't really do that. No, we would, at our place that we started to go when I first started coming up at the comedy store, you know, with Chris, Dilly, and all these guys, we would always go to the one on one cafe. Mm. That's where we went. That was our that was our canter. So now it's like one on one or swingers. We go mm. to we go to swingers a lot. Yeah, that's where you see a lot of comics at. You know, Saturday night late or Friday night yeah. late. That's where we go. Yeah, I live in Silver Lake, so I don't. I kind of like you know that's that's another reason why I don't perform a lot at the store. Yeah, I was wondering where you've been. It's like I, I kind of like being out there for some reason. There's something really cool. There's some peacefulness out there. Oh, God. I don't know if you've ever yeah, spent any time. Uh, that pretentious energy. No, you can't, you can't go to a coffee shop without somebody writing a script. You know, that's please the tell way me you didn't go in everywhere. a guest house and you were in like you co- the, the coffee no, bean no, writing. No, no, no. I just like it because it's like the last Silver Lake Atwater Village Echo Park. Um, you know, uh, you know, um, Los Feliz. I just think it's kind of the last part of true Hollywood. You what? Know? <laughs> well, no. If you think about, if you think about the buildings that are being built on Sunset. Oh, true enough. That's my point. My point is, 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 like, is the, the last. The comedy school is gonna be the last building, and it's gonna be yeah. like. No, my <laughs> my point like is, it feels to me, it feels like there's a tundra going over Sunset mm. and taking out of the soul. You know, and the and, you know the hippie vibe and the in the party vibe, and it's it. going out, and all these big, huge high rises are there, and I think like if you if you keep going, you get to like the uh, the Scientology Center, that area over there. Yeah, it just becomes like you know, Bill Burr lives out there. Um, you know, Mark Marin lives out there. There's just something. It's almost like all these buildings out there are so old. They're in like in their twenties. So there's something I like about that. I like I'm not that. saying I'll be there forever. But just kind of where I'm at right now, I, there's something I like there. And plus, you have to understand that I was born and raised on the Sunset Strip. Yeah, I've man. been at the comedy store my whole life. You've seen a lot of change on that on that strip. I mean, imagine yeah. the, imagine the House of Blues is gone. It's and, terrible. And they're putting yeah. up this, like, yeah. whatever the fuck that was, is they're putting I up. I was there in the 80s when my mom... I used to be a short order cook at the comedy store in Westwood. Um, and I and, my, and then Alan Stevens and the comedians would drop me drop me off at the store at around two a.m. and my mom would come out and grab her in her jag and we would drive down Sunset around two thirty in the morning, and we'd go by um, we'd go by like the whiskey on yeah, Sunset yeah, and Black yeah. Flag would Which be is performing. Glad it's still there. Yeah, yeah. Whiskey and the Roxy and all those you know little clubs. Yeah. And the Viper Room. And it was just insane. You know what I mean? It was like if people were throwing up on our windshield, we'd <laughs> drive by. No, that's how it was. And now it's just like, you know, it's a big Instagram video. You know, it's like <laughs> naked chicks selling pot, you yeah. know, which is fucking weird. Do you ever you think know? that the comedy store, you think the comedy store is going to be there forever? I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't support knocking it down. I mean, hopefully the comics, you know, if that ever happens, hopefully the comics would support not knocking it down. Yeah, I you think know, it would be a fight for that. I think, I think it should be a Hollywood landmark. Yeah, it's not? No, it's not. Oh, But man. I think it should be a Hollywood landmark similar to, you know, the, the Chinese wax museum, yeah. Chinese theater, and also the, uh, the, um, uh, 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 the Capitol building. Yeah, but after, a, I mean, after... Since seventy two, I mean, how long does it take to be a, a, a landmark? I don't know. You know, it's one of those things. You I know? mean, if, uh, you know, if I was being like a greedy person, I'd be like, I could also see like, you know, you sell the property, you have them build whatever they want to build up top, but the mm. comedy store is still there. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, they yeah, redo I mean, it there's in different the ways. There, then you start, you, but if you, you do that, parking, then you're taking. You yeah, you're, if you do that, then you're taking away, you know, the feel of the yes, whole building. Yes, and yes, I don't yes. think my mom would would want that. Of course not. You know, and plus the building before the comedy store was Ciro's. Did you know that? Right. Yes. It was an old. You know, that's yeah, where yeah, Sinatra yeah. was, Sammy Davis, and and that's where, uh, 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 you know, everyone, Marilyn Monroe, yeah, everyone was there. You know, so it's like that. My mom took it over at that time. I After really, that, I really yeah. thought it was a national. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A landmark. Mm-mm. Oh man, mm. what do we got to do to make it a landmark? Have the comics, you know, do a petition. I don't know. Is that I, we should we should actually really find out about that? We'll do it. Have the have the comics do it. You know, well, we're the comics, man. Well, they're also probably watching us. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big interview for you. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Is this a big get? <laughs> this is a big get. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no, On Riffin' uh, with Griffin, the biggest guest today. <laughs> um, I think it feels like it should be, you know. But I don't know if the, is the Whiskey and the Roxy Hollywood landmarks? Are they gonna, I don't know. Because I, don't I know, know they're knocking down the Viper Room. What? Yeah. I heard oh, they're knocking no. down that whole block. You know what the Viper oh, Room was years ago? Up to the Hustler, like the you know yeah. the Hustler store. No, that's like the next block. I'm talking about like Sunbee Liquor Store. There's a sushi bar, and then there's some. Um, there's like a, a trinket place there. You know that whole. Yes, yes, yes. You know, 
that whole thing. But you notice they knocked down or they they built a big uh, a big uh, parking thing and they kept Cabo Wabo. Hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> You see that? You, but Isn't you, that funny? But you know what they're doing? It's like, like a little mole on the side of this big fucking... <laughs> but not that... They probably wouldn't sell. They probably wouldn't sell. That's what happens. Oh, I'm sure. But but like, you know, right next to Pink Dot, they're tearing all that down. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's going to be like yeah, another... Yeah, Ari Shafir lived there. That's going to be another monstrosity yeah. that they're going to put right yeah. there. Probably gonna be, it's probably going to be good for the store. Yeah. Like all that, because like yeah. across the street from, I think it's going to be a hotel or something yeah. across the street. Yeah. So that's just going to increase yeah. business. But it's I, like, think, I think the comedy store, the fact that it's doing so well, I think is another reason why you just want to leave it alone. Yeah. You know, if it, was, if it was dead and there was nothing going on there, then there would be that conversation. Right, right, right. But I think the fact that the comics of all, they're all coming out and doing it. So, yeah. Well, that's good, man. I mean, I, I do appreciate that. So, like, I know with the movie that we did, you wrote mo- a lot of it. Yeah. And now, is this going to be a thing that you're going to be doing? Are you going to be writing more movies? Are you writing movies right now? Like, what are you doing? I have, What's I the have, next project? Um, well, I have a couple documentaries in the can, you know. Um, really? Document? Did you direct or are you just a producer? Yeah, I did them both. I put them together. There, uh-huh. was, a, there was a documentary that I did um, called Stands Alone, which was on Showtime a couple years ago. And then I kept filming, and I have a six-part series based off of that. And that was all the stuff kind of leading up to my mom's passing. Oh, wow. And that was pretty heavy. So yeah, I have I that. Imagine. That's that's in the can, and that's already cut. And then I also have a, um, a, a historical documentary of my life um, that I did. You know, What's that called? Just Pauly? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But I did that, and that's... Or, got, or should be called Are You Sure? <laughs> or maybe it's called Riffin' with the Weez. Oh, my God. Oh, bro. <laughs> No, so I have that, and then um, I have another script called Captured, which uh-huh. is a comedy film, which I'd like the guys that did our movie to do. Yeah, and that's a it's a movie about with me and Bobby Lee. It's where I capture him, I put him in a cage in my backyard, <laughs> and it's kind of like a movie about friendship. Why? What's well, a movie about friendship? Why would you? Okay, so he's so like my char- my character, my the lead character Skippy, he can't keep a friend because uh-huh. everyone in his life either leaves him or he wants him out. So the only way he can keep a friend is if he captures him, puts him in a cage, but he doesn't capture anyone. He captures Bobby's character because he wants to capture someone whose life is more fucked up than, you know. Oh, wow, this sounds dark. Yeah. So when he captures <laughs> him, puts him in a cage. So I see him. <laughs> yeah. So I see him in a parking lot. I go, and I hit him, and he wakes up, and he's in this cage, but he's got all his Nintendo. He's got all his stuff, and he's yelling at me. <coughs> and he, like, he's like, get me out of here. I'm like, dude, you're good. Don't worry about it. And then, you know, some it stuff It sounds frightening. Happens. Yeah. <laughs> But we want you to play the cop in it. <laughs> I want my typecast as a <laughs> fucking cop. Um, so yeah. So uh, what, what so. are you watching right now? So do you watch documentaries? Like what 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 keeps you entertained? What shows are you watching? What movies um, are you the watching? The Amy Schumer Netflix special? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Can you see? I'm pregnant. Mm, I'm pregnant. Mm. The views expressed by Polly Shore are not mm. the views. <laughs> I'm pregnant. Mm. Hey, that blows people up. What are you talking about? Hey, Literally. That's another reason why I have the kids so I can get a special out of it. <laughs> you know, yeah, I had a kid. Yeah, I'm waiting for the guy yeah, whose exactly. wife is pregnant to right. come out with a special. Yeah. My wife's having a baby. <laughs> 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 and, the, and the wife's on the poster. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, now, what are you watching? I, you know, I you love guilty I, pleasures. I love watching sports. I'm obsessed with basketball. Oh, uh, what, what do you basketball. think about the NBA right now? This fucking dude from Milwaukee's a fucking animal. Yeah, dude. yeah. He's not Ante fucking. Takumpo. I can't pronounce his name, but yeah. he's fucking. He's in another level. That's I know. that's the next Kevin Kevin Dur- uh, Durant right yes, there. Because he's fucking. They sick. can win the championship this year, dude. I think so. <laughs> I think it's gonna be fucking them and Golden State. If Houston, I mean Houston, I mean it's great. I love this. It's like. I mean, I don't know if it's Jews love basketball, but Jews <laughs> fucking love basketball. I've always loved basketball ever since I was a kid. You think? You think? Has, what, why would it have anything to do with being a Jew? I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it is. It's just one of those sports that Jews love. If you look at the side of the Lakers or the, you know, you go into the Clipper games, you got yeah. Billy Crystal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's you know, a lot of Jews. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, they just love it. I don't know. It's, maybe because it's fast and Jews are like like to move around or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I, I love basketball. So I, I, you know, I love you know the LeBron thing's pretty fucking nuts. What yeah. like what's gonna happen? I mean, that was he was never he didn't fit right here. Personally, you this know. with the playoff. Well, he don't, he should have came to the Clippers. Is what he should have done. Correct. He should have came to the Clippers. R- right city, wrong team. Yeah, we they they'd be still playing, be playing Correct. right now. Correct. You he's got to be thinking. He's like, you know, can I just like change Ooh, the jersey? I know. Uh, we're already here. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we could just switch it. You know, yeah. I, think I, I heard on a, uh, one of those, I love watching those debate shows. Mm. I watch Speak for Yourself, First Take, uh, yeah, Pardon like the Interruption. Yeah, yeah. I watch all those. I like Stephen A. Smith. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watch First great. Take in the morning. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I tape them so I can watch them whenever. Oh, wow. You know, uh, but the um, they were talking about like, Will LeBron ask for a trade? Because mm. he was blindsided by the Magic Johnson thing. Well, he's just saying that. He's like using that as an excuse. Well, yeah. who cares? Like, like if I, if I don't like the Lakers. Yeah. So if he comes to the Clippers, I'll be happy. But for now, I'm like, I'm glad they're doing bad. Yeah. But I'm just tired of like two teams. I'm mm. tired of Golden State because I feel like all this talk about Kevin Durant leaving mm. is like then that doesn't seem like a team I want to support. Mm. You know what I mean? They're, yeah, yeah. He's just like a hired gun and he's going to leave. Yeah. So get him out of here. Yeah. And then same thing with Boston. I'm glad Boston's about to lose because mm. same thing, Kyrie Irving. Yeah. All year they're talking about Kyrie Irving's not going to stay. Kevin Durant's not going to stay. So yeah. I don't want to see those teams. I yeah, want to yeah. see like Denver. Yeah, Denver's great. They're great. They, and they, oh all their stars are under God. 25. They are so good. Yeah, you see the the, the 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 main dude. What's his name? The big white Joker. dude. Joker. No, the white. Jokic. Dude. Yeah. He's fucking with his passes and yeah, shit. Yeah, like yeah. little butter, dude. And he's like seven foot. He's like fucking. he's got twenty seven like assists in the last two games. Like, um, like 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 if Golden State thinks they're just gonna zip past them, right, right, that would be the great upset. That would be great. Like, Do you think Houston's gonna beat Golden State? Though? I would like them to beat Golden mm. State, but I just don't think it's gonna mm. happen. Yeah, because because when they get back to Oakland, it's like right? well, I mean, they can beat them. I just want to see what they do in a close game on the road. Mm. You know, I just haven't seen that. Mm. I haven't seen Houston step up. You mm. know, mm. especially James Harden. He always he chokes a lot. Mm. And then they, look, I had, we had Chris Paul with the Clippers, and he his move is to get hurt. Mm. That's his move. It's yeah. his go to. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if it, it, it survives that. But but who do you got for the championship? Who you been with? Man. Well, I would love I would love it to be I would love it to be uh, like obviously Denver in, in Milwaukee would be awesome. That would no be, one would watch, think, but <laughs> that's true, that would be, as a basketball that, fan, that would be a great matchup. But I don't think that's gonna. I could be the one that's gonna move the ratings. Yeah, that's not gonna move the needle. Yeah, you know. But okay, so you watch sports. Yeah, I like right. basketball. Yeah. You watch basketball, not yeah, just I like sports. football too. I like football, football too. Football yeah. season, but yeah, what shows and are then, you watching? And then I like watching our president. I like watching, you know, Donald Trump. Fuck, because I'm in shock. You know, it's like the still biggest... in shock. <laughs> At this not, point, not, you're still in shock, really. I mean, no, not now. It's kind of like an old joke. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like an old joke. But I, I just love the fact that he gets everyone so pissed off. I, I think it's thing. hilarious. Um, you know, and the thing that's fucked up is that he might win again. Oh, I would put money that he's yeah. gonna win again. Do you think Joe Biden can beat him? No. The thing is, is like the here's the problem: the liberals, mm. you know, and I find myself to be a self hating liberal because I just don't like what the party's doing. But I feel like. People on the, the liberal side, they love to hate Trump more than they like any candidate on the Democratic Party. Right. So they just yeah. it's just more attention to him all the time. Uh-huh. Look, even we're talking about him right yeah. now, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Who, who, We've only I mentioned the, one Democrat, Biden. Yeah, I think the only person that can, and I'm not just saying that to be funny, and this is one of my jokes, but it's a real true story. I think that the only person that could beat Donald Trump is The Rock. For real. <laughs> Like if because he's bigger, he's more famous, he looks better. Trump supporters like The Rock because he's like a wrestler. Yeah, Bill you know? Bill Maher. On I his really show, think he said Oprah. So this no. is it's not. I'm just saying, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Now that Trump is one, that someone that just is completely unqualified yeah. in politics could actually become president. I think that's the only hope is The Rock. He's not going to do it though. He's not going to do it, but I think he would win. Yeah, but the moment The Rock becomes like runs for office, all of a sudden they're gonna they, he's gonna be scrutinized. They're gonna be like, "Oh, look how he hit that guy with the chair." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, all, it's true. Like all that stuff will become like. Yeah, but then the can redneck, you trust The Rock? <laughs> but then the redneck fans will be like, "Man, fuck it, he's awesome. That's cool, <laughs> dude. He's a rock, man. He was in the Tooth Maybe. Fairy." Maybe. I think that's my only thought. Or, you know, everyone's got to get behind Biden or fucking Bernie, which I don't see happening. Just so. pick one. Right, right. That's all I'm saying is we need yeah. to pick. They need yeah. to tell us, hey, we're going to go with this guy. And then we all go, okay, let's right. do it. Yeah. Let's not have the same shit that happened before, yeah. you know? Because right now it's not looking good. I think Bernie's got to go, man. He's got to go. He's got to go because he already lost to somebody that lost. Right. He got outplayed right. by somebody. They got, got outplayed by right. the winner. So I don't think he's got it in him to, to do it. Let, let's move on. Let's get some new blood in there, man. 
Right. I don't know what to say. I mean, right now there's Biden's the only one. Seems to be, but his whole tactic about just all he does is he, he just he's just attacking Trump every day now. He's calling him a what did he call him a baby or something like he just he's just always like he's he's like do he's trying to trump Trump. Yeah. You know, so they like trumping each other. And then what else do I watch? I think Sports Center and I watch politics and then what other stuff do I watch? Sometimes you don't know I go entertainment? on Netflix. You don't Some, no, no Game I, of Thrones, no mm-mm. no no vampire diaries, mm-mm. no <laughs> You, you, you don't you don't have any guilty pleasure shows, man. I Just can't believe Instagram this. Just Instagram stories. <laughs> <laughs> That's looking, pretty entertaining. Look, looking for Mrs. Shore. <laughs> no, just watching people's Instagrams at night are pretty funny. Um, I'm trying to think what I've seen on that. I saw some fucking crazy documentary Sandy told me to see about some guy that... I forgot his fucking. He was just. I like watching stuff that people tell me to watch. Oh. You know, like, hey, you got to see this or you got to see that. But uh, I forgot the name of the doc. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, wow. I can't believe you're not like you've been yeah. in the entertainment business so long. Yeah. You, is it is it because you just don't want you just want to be out of it, or like like what like you you're, you're trying to write movies and stuff. You got to watch what's going on out I there. I already know how to write movies. Oh, this yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, tell tell me some stuff and I'll tell you. Give me some stuff. Game of Thrones. I don't watch, yeah. but I want to watch. You want to watch? I okay, want to watch. Did you watch Breaking Bad when that was that when no. that was on? Oh my Keep God. going. Keep going. Uh, what's the one on? Um, the, I'm a, dying up here. Did you watch him dying no, up here? Dying oh, up you here. motherfucker! Right, yeah. Every time I would see you, he'd be like, "We're gonna sue you." <laughs> <laughs> That's you. Yeah, Every that time was, I saw you, that was weird. That was a weird thing for me. Yeah, just to, you know what I mean. Just yeah, but you know what? Thing. It's like people. I just think that they used the name of the book mm. just because it had a name. But yeah. the show was about Jim. It was about his stories. Yeah. You know, he lived in a closet when he first came to LA. Yeah. You know, he he had a fight in a parking lot, and he, you know, he used the stories that he knew, he remembered, and that's yeah. what, he, what he remembered, and that's what the show was about, because it was very fascinating. He took us all to dinner mm. first season, and he like, starts telling stories, and it was just like really like captivating to hear mm-hmm. his point of view about that era, yeah. and he just wanted to show it. But the motherfucker should have been on the show. Yeah. He should have been like, a, come and be an agent, be something, yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah. use your fame to help yeah. that goddamn show stay yeah, on the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was, you know. But you didn't even watch it at all? I saw a little bit of it, but it's hard it was hard for me to see my mom portrayed that way. Yeah, but but yeah. but again, yeah. The comedy see this is what people don't understand. The comedy store existed in our show. This wasn't the comedy store. Like in our show, we made reference to the comedy store. Yeah, I know, I know this there was wasn't a, a lot completely of, there wasn't a lot of stuff that were was real about the comedy store in it. Yeah, but I know, but that's yeah. what I'm saying because we—it wasn't the comedy store; it was Goldie's. I understand. You know, but it was just still—it was still based off of a club in the '70s run by a female, and that was close enough. Yeah, yeah. But she me. wasn't. But she was very much like not trying to be that. She wasn't. No. She was very. No. Melissa Leo was always like, "I'm not Mitzi Show. I'm this person." Right, right, right. You know, so. But I understand. I get it. Yeah. So. Mm. But I don't know. That's like it was like mixed reviews. You know, it's like. I know a lot of comics that really enjoyed watching yeah. it. And then there's some that, like, just the old, like, Doug Stanhope was always talking shit. He didn't like it. Yeah. And uh, I heard Leno on Marin. He didn't like it. Yeah. So, you know, it, just, it was mixed. Bill Burr loves it. Yeah. I ha- I'd have to watch it more to, like, see, like, if I really, you know what I mean? Maybe what? when I get older, I'll be able to look at it. Just look at it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm Where can I see it on Hulu? It's on. No. It's, well, you, get, you have money. You get Showtime. It's still on oh, Showtime. It's on Showtime. Okay. Yeah. You know. Okay. Uh, let's see. I've watched. Uh, there's a good show on. You like? Do you have Prime? Like, what do you have? What I are have your services? Prime. Yeah. I have you have Prime, Hulu, Prime, Prime and Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You got all the good stuff. Yeah. And you're yeah. not even watching the stuff. Tell me what to watch. Okay. And I'll watch uh, it. I like this show. Hannah. Show Hannah was good. That's on Prime. It's based off the movie, but they made it into a show. I it's about this little female assassin. Like she, like you know, she grew up with her dad in the jungle yeah. or whatever. You know what kind of movies I like? What? Because I think that's the problem. I like movies like Moonlight. Mo- oh, what? The Academy Award film Moonlight. So you like pretentious movies? I like movies with good stories and good directors and some good actors. Well, that's movies. Sometimes but that, you, but you don't no. watch TV. Sometimes you watch TV just to escape, man. You don't like you don't always have to learn shit or appreciate the lighting in a movie to enjoy it. No, I li- I like good stories. You know, so that's why I liked Moonlight. So, if you can tell me there's a good story to watch. These are think- good. Oh my god. Okay, Hannah. <laughs> Hannah, what else? 
Tin Star. That's another good one. Tim Roth is in that one. And, Tin uh, Star? Tin Star. That's on Prime also. Okay. That's a good one. Text them to me and I'll watch it. I will. It. I will. I'm going to yeah, get you a list what, of. Well, that's what And Sandy then I'm going to have you on again and we're going to talk about these shows. Yeah, so, so Sandy, well, people will text me. I'll watch this, watch that. And then I'll start watching it and I'll be like, oh, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot yeah. of good stuff up yeah, there. Yeah, I know. I want to see it. Yeah. I just don't know what to see. Sometimes you got to escape. I'll, you don't watch network television at all. You've never mm. seen like Grey's Anatomy or. Not or, for or, me. Or, or nothing like that? Not for me. How to Get Away with Murder, Dances with the Stars, American Not Idol? Not for me. Not for me. Not even Last Comic no. Standing? Did you I ever like watch watching that? CNN shit on Trump. Ugh. That's funny. <laughs> You're an old man now. <laughs> <laughs> you, watch, you probably watch Jeopardy. No. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. I can't believe you're not watching, like, any comedies at all. No comedies. It's hard for me to watch comedies. Why is that? Well, I've been around. Are you a it tough since, critic? Yeah, I've been around it my whole life. So even at the store, it's hard for me to watch the comics. Really? Really? Why is that? Cool, because I watched, you know, you know, Sam Kennison and Richard Pryor and Robin Williams on that stage. Eddie Murphy is a different vibe. Yeah. You know, like but they when, had when their Rich, time. They had their time when they needed. They needed uh, no, to work on saying, their act. No, but I'm not saying that the comics aren't funny now. I think there's a lot of really, really. I mean, you're hilarious. There's a lot of really funny comics. But just the energy in, in the way that it was back then is different now. Even though there's the same amount of butts in the seats, right? Like when, how is it different? Tell me, what describe to me the well, difference? Richard in the Pryor energy. was like Jesus Christ. Okay, when he walked on stage, it was like, you know what I mean? It was like seeing someone like that. Or George Carlin, when he walked on stage, it was like. Now is it because different. is it because they were so famous at the time? No, because they were so funny. Oh, okay. So funny. I mean, like, in re even Eddie Murphy, when he would come in and, you know, he would roll in and he would go on stage, he was, like, back in the, the Raw days uh -huh. when he did Raw. Like, he was performing at the store at that time. And it was, like, it was a different, it was insane. Well, at that, well, see, that's an example of somebody that I know, super funny, but I'm saying at the time was larger than life. Yeah, but super funny. Yeah. But, but we, funny as fuck, dude. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, his yeah. fucking shit, like... I mean, when he was on stage, and you know, even when I watched George Carlin towards, you know, the, before he passed, just like he would go go at the store, and you would just like he was like a doctor on stage. He would sit in the back, and he had his pad there, and he would just like go into this for like an hour and a half, two hours, and just like Jesus Christ, wow. So it was just, uh, so that's what I'm saying. Even music for for the same for me. It's like I like music now, but I'll listen to like a Led Zeppelin, or I'll listen to the Stones, or right. I'll listen to the Beatles, or, or you're you nostalgic, know, or even like. Smashing Pumpkins, you know, or Alice in Chains or these bands that, that, you know, that to me, you know, the Almond Brothers, you know, the things like that that I listen to, I just think, you know, and the music's good now. I, you know, I hear some stuff now, but it's not. I get you. Like, well, like you were an old soul from Jump. You had to be, mm. right? Yeah. Because even as a little kid, you couldn't be a little kid. Yeah. Yeah, so... But you don't think that the, it rivals at all, like like when Chris Rock comes in and Chappelle comes in and B when Bill Burr and even Louis before he like fell from grace, it wasn't you don't feel you don't feel that same kind of thing when those people are on stage. Chappelle a little, you know Chappelle a little. Right. Chappelle's great. I mean, I think he's great. I, th I like both his specials. You know. Um, but what do you think about all the specials? You think there's too many specials or? Are they not special anymore to you, or what, like, do you watch them? You watch? Them I any try of those? to watch them. You know, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, I try to. <laughs> no, I do. You sound I, to me like you're oftentimes disappointed. Well, I just, I don't know. You know, it's I'm a hard critic for for comedy. I like guys like I like I said I like you. I like Bobby. I like Bill Burr. I like, you know, I like Philippe. You know, um, you know. That's it. Because <laughs> no. there's no more pictures. No, I just. <laughs> Uh, no, I we need more pictures with a wall of comics for Polly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a different critic, you know. I'm a different. I'm a different critic. Also, like musically, are you a fair critic? No, I don't think I am. Okay, I don't think I am. No, um, so you're a harsh, picky yeah, critic. Yeah. Well, it's like the thing is, is like I'll see, I'll see, um, and I don't want to name the specific comics, but I'll see them on stage at the store, and they'll uh -huh. be doing well, and the audience is is laughing and, and I'm watching, you know, and they're, they're, they're doing well. And, 
and then I'll be like, you know, like these, these, this audience, they don't, this is what they, I don't want to say this is what they think, but this is what it is right now. Right. And this is what they're, this is, they're drinking the punch. This is, this is what it is. And then, and then I'm like thinking like 20, 30 years ago, I was watching, you know, Andrew Dice Clay when he first, Robin Williams. Right, and I'm like, right. I wish this generation could have seen that. You know, and maybe they have, or maybe they will. You know, maybe they'll get more. Even Rodney Dangerfield, fuck, dude. I mean, uh, fuck, this guy was hilarious. I mean, just like, now, you do, know. You, do you feel at all that this attitude is just old? Or is it like a little bit of that and a little bit of like the, the people of old were just better at it? Or is it? I think it's what you just said. I think it's both. I think part of it is I'm older, uh -huh. and part of it is that they were just better. That's just that's my opinion. Uh -huh. People, the kids might say, "Oh, blah 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 is awesome." Like, right, 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 right. You know, maybe I'm out of touch. I don't know. You know, maybe that's that's it. But I mean, that comes with age, though. I feel like you know, I just feel like once you hit forty, you just become out of touch. You're not cool anymore. You're not like you know. And the struggle to well, try to still be cool is the, is the real is the real. Well, it's like yeah, it's crime. like when you go to a club, you know, you know. I used to be the guy, you know, around the, the you know around the bottle, and now I'm the guy behind looking at the people at the with the <laughs> bottle. You know what I mean? I'm like, fuck. Now you're me. the guy going, it's so loud in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Turn the music down. <laughs> and it, it's it's and, it, and and it's one of those things that it just naturally happens. It's not like I woke up one day and you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's just slowly, you slowly start to your interests slowly start to change. Yeah, but once, you know? but sometimes you wake up in the like it. It can happen suddenly mm. when you're just at a club, mm. you know, and then someone says like, "Excuse me, sir," or right, yeah, yeah, or yeah. you know, you know, or, or like you know, you get that like, are you like your security or something, or are you the manager or the? Yeah, you yeah, go, yeah, yeah. oh, I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. And this is this is not for yeah. me. So that's why I talk about bringing it back to having a kid. You gotcha. know, I think that I think that would be something that would be new and fresh for me. You know, it's like I've done so much and I've seen so much and I've been through so much that the one thing that I haven't been through is is having a family or a child. And I think that would be really interesting and be fresh for me and I think would bring, you know, this this kind of unconditional joy in my life that right. I don't have. Well, you I know? think that you're yeah. going to get there, man. I yeah, think you can find point. it. I think I yeah. think that this version of yourself right now, you got to put that out there more. And, and what about they, these shoes? These shoes won't get kids though. Yeah. We'll see now and then you just you lost everybody. Yeah. You had it. <laughs> it was a sweet moment. We was about to go into the put the landing gear out for girls to be ah and then he pulled the slipper off. Okay? So <laughs> you're killing me. Um, no, we're going to get you on uh, eHarmony. And I think that'd be hilarious. The last thing you should cool. do is, like, on your show, you should go fill out your eHarmony profile. Right. And then just, like, start start, start doing it. Why not? Because I think that I, I hear genuinely in your mm. voice that this is something that you want to do. And you just have to, like, you just have to do it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what, what are you waiting on? That's what, what we're going to do. My friend Eric's here. He's filling out a, he's filling an eHarmony profile for himself, right? Too? Sure. Because he... Well, he <laughs> Don't for the, look for the at bit. Me like that. No, he's been through a lot of shit too. You know, he's yeah. been going through stuff with girls too, and it's it's just hard. It's hard. You know, you're single, right? Yeah. Why well, recently? Yeah. So. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. It's. I like, know. I get it. It's like, you know, I don't know. I think that. I don't know. I think if you yeah, but go, you had a bad situation. You 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 know you're yeah yeah you went through a bad breakup. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to talk about it, it's no, fine. I would I would like to, but it's too <laughs> it's too fresh, and I don't think. That'd oh, be but you cool. you still you still, still painful. No, I just don't think that that person would want their stuff out there, and I think out uh, of respect, you know. What I mean? Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's not you're cool. Right. She was a bitch. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's just it is what it is. Yeah, so. I know. But this is what I'm saying. We get like now we're this is what I'm saying. Mm. Look how vulnerable you are about this. I could tell that I could tell this about you right now. This family thing is really important to you. Mm. Uh, this last girl hurt you greatly mm. and you're still dealing with that. Yeah. You know, and I could tell this thing with your family is mm. something that you really want to get resolved mm. and fixed and like live the rest of your life knowing that I fixed this with my with my family. I could tell that these are things that you really want to do and I, I I'm just I just hope you achieve those things. I want you to. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I feel like you're my psycho psychiatrist. Well, no, but I'm just nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. I know I'm just like, you know, you, it, I I know why I get it completely now why yeah. these crowds that are coming to see you all the time. Yeah. I get it because you are uh you are a very pleasant person, mm. but you're just like you know vulnerable. Mm. You know, it's like people can feel 
things from you. Mm -hmm. And so you have to just like clean out your life of all that bullshit, Mm. you know, and then fix the things you can fix and then carry on. Yeah. So you're 92 in Vegas, you know, until then, you Mm. know what I mean? Mm. How come there's not a comedy store in Vegas, by the way? I don't know. <laughs> there, I mean, there's so there's so many comedy clubs out there now. Didn't Jimmy Kimmel just open? Yeah, up? Jimmy Kimmel just opened open one. one. You know, but there's enough there's yeah. enough people out there for for it. I don't know. I mean, you got to talk to the family about that. Yeah, I don't understand yeah. that because then it would just book the comics. You know. Yeah. They got a ha- yeah. They, we Carol, have one. No, not Caroline's, but the cellar just opened up mm-hmm. one in, in the in Vegas, and I'm like, mm-hmm. you can't just you can't have the cellar out in Vegas and not have the comics. Maybe we need to open one in Jersey. Right. Since they can't. Or no, Atlantic City. Yeah, exactly. That'd be hilarious. See how they feel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. All right, where are we at? We're at Oh, look at that. See? That's how we do it. That's awesome. Well, anyways, um, this is, uh, like I said, I'm glad you came on. Um, I hope we do do more projects together because yeah. it really was fun. Yeah, it was fun. You know? Yeah, it was Guest house too. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be on a boat, though, you know? <laughs> I know. No, yeah. I, I I really enjoyed having you in the film, and, and yeah. it was great. We and when and when are we when could we? Uh, I think the movie it's come, coming out. It'll probably because it's going to get a theatrical release. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. It's got yeah, to. we're not going it's to Netflix, to. y'all. Yeah, we going right to. to theaters. Yeah, uh, it, it'll be out. I think at the end of, at the end of this year or early next year. I'm in touch with Sam, uh-huh. the director on it, and we're just kind of like. Uh, you know, they're doing the edit, so that's kind oh, of... Yeah, that the old edit. So then we'll have, like, a screening and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. But, um, but uh, you know, I'm excited about... I'm really excited about my, my show, too. Uh, right, Polly and Shows the podcast. Ran- yeah, Random Rants Podcast, which is all videos now, which is kind of like Big Brother, but with one person. And you can find that on YouTube. Yeah. You have a website. I'm going to have it all in the description. You can yeah. find out about all these things. So you have Polly's Rants, and what's it called again? Polly, uh, Polly Shows Random Rants. Holly Shore's random rants. Random rants. It's me just going crazy in my apartment. Just I, yeah, about whatever. I just about, talk about. So we everything. got that. You can see him there, and and then you can also, of course, on your website, right? You can get all the tour dates and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, tour dates, my Instagram, all all the stuff you have, I have. Whatever yeah. you have, I have. We all have the same shit. <laughs> You know, and uh, yeah, and watch my Eric Griffin's random rants. I have uh, <laughs> I'm putting cameras up, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but thanks for having me, just bro. in the bathrooms. But no, I appreciate you coming yeah, yeah, on, you yeah. are uh, a joy to be around. And um, anyways, that's been another episode of Riffin with Griffin. Uh, tune in next week. I don't know who I'm gonna have yet, but uh, we'll see if they can top this one. And uh, once again, thanks to Mr. Polly Shore for coming on the show, uh, beautiful man. Uh, we got to get him a relationship. He's going to fix all his issues. <laughs> He's going to come back on again and talk about it. He'll have like a baby carriage over here. Be like, you got somebody pregnant? <laughs> but uh, anyways, this is Eric Griffin signing off. See you next time.